Thank you very much, Jane. Good evening and welcome to the program. First tonight, the wind farm showdown playing out in our state's mid-north. Ever since the wind farms were built, surrounding residents have abandoned their homes, claiming the turbines were making them sick. But as you'd expect, the industry's always said the ill effects are all in the mind. Now, though, we're finally about to learn the truth about what impact they really do have. Lucy Polkinghorne reports on a win of sorts for the homeowners who've been battling into the wind for too long. People like us are not telling furphies. It's real. We can feel it. It's a big mistake, and it's obvious that something's wrong. They're mad as hell, and they want some action. The people that live here know that these problems have started when the wind farm started operating, and that they didn't have this issue before. And at last, they might just get it. Do you think that there is a legitimate problem here? Well, I think the concerns that, we, that I've heard today and that we uh, discussed previously when we met uh, with, with some of the local community before Christmas, they're, they're real. These people are, are being disturbed, they're, they're having all sorts of, of impacts on their lives. These are what could be called the Waterloo Wind Farm refugees, driven from their homes by what they say is a disturbing low-frequency sound called infrasound, generated by the swirling blades of these 140-metre monsters. And it's not restricted to just one wind farm. Protests have been raised all over the country. Very low pulsing noise can be quite irritating, mostly at night, early in the mornings. What is the loss of sleep going to do to our lives? Feeling agitated. I dread going up there now. I'd do anything not to go up there. Even the chickens seem to have had the wind put up them. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. That's not normal. But so far, they've largely been written as hypochondriacs, malcontents, or even just envious of those making money from the leasing of their land to the wind farms. However, they now have some serious science to prove the existence of infrasound. First well-renowned audiologist Steve Cooper. The infrasound is energy that appears in the spectrum below what the human ear can normally hear. And most recently, Adelaide Uni professor Con Doolan. The low frequency noise and, and their annoyance is correlated, yes, that's for sure. The power industry, who've always been very coy about their own data, maintain infrasound is just naturally occurring background noise. Just wanted to ask you a question. I mean, you're a wind farm manager. That's right, yeah. Can you ask, um, I mean, why won't you guys participate in these testings? If you, uh, if you want to get a comment for your uh, story, you need to speak to Sarah Stent, our corporate affairs manager. Well, the documentation to say that there's no issue in terms of infrasound is, is not correct when you look at the facts. Enter the EPA, who up until now have fallen into line with the government and the power industry. But what the locals want is for them to take seriously the independent data. The only way we're going to get proper meaningful data is if the EPA use their statutory powers and get all the data from the wind farm company. Well, today in a private meeting came a breakthrough. The CEO, Dr Campbell Gamel, did just that. Will you conduct the proper tests that uh, will resolve this issue? Well, uh, definitely. I mean, that's exactly the point of, of the research project that, that we're going to work uh, together with the university on. We've got to move this forward. The concerns that the local community are describing are very real. But he went even further. Will you ensure that it tests as low as one hertz? In fact, we're, we're hoping to go down to 0.25 hertz. Um, we're actually trying to get as low as, as, as possible. It's actually really hard to get the, the kit that has that sensitivity right down to that low frequency level, but that's precisely what we're doing. The tests that would confirm the source of the well, sound need to be conducted yes. by turning the turbines off and on in a sequence, which the EPA have promised to do. This should reveal any change in the level and frequency of the sound. To do that, the power companies must cooperate, and so far, they've resisted. We will use whatever powers of persuasion we've got. I mean, our, we want the companies to, to work with us, and I'm, I'm pretty certain that they will. I think it's in their interest when it comes to longer-term uh, future developments. This is a welcome sign of willingness from our environmental watchdog to put people's health concerns at the top of the agenda. This is a huge step in the right direction for residents who live near wind farms. So the tests will start in March. They'll take about three months, so we'll certainly bring you the results then. Lucy Polkinghorne with that report.